Alison Nichelle from Waffle TV and we're here today with Will Merrick who is the star of Punk Rock. How are you doing today? I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, I've just come out of the performance literally I think about three minutes ago. So I'm a bit like spaced out. Yeah. I think that's the best way to describe it, I'm a bit spaced out. Um, well it was a fantastic performance, I won't give too much you. away but it's sort of uh, kids at school in sixth form yeah. and it's them sort of going through their GCSEs and it sort of spirals and gets a bit yeah, crazy. That's quite fun. Very intense, yeah. Because <laughs> it's actually the A levels. Oh, A levels? It is. A oh, levels. my bad, my bad. That's fine. I mean, it's <laughs> confusing to get mixed up. Yeah, yeah. Actually, so tell us a bit about the show itself. Okay, so um, the show is sort of centered, I suppose, the, the, the aesthetic, the outside view of it is that it's centered around. Um, seven sixth form students who go to school in a grammar school in Manchester and they're all about to take their A level two mocks. They're just going they're, they're at that time of the year. So it's sort of like it sort of starts uh, September uh, in, in it just before they're going into their mocks and it's a group of these seven students that aren't really the cool kids, they're not really popular. They're very cliquey and they've got this little group of misfits that all hang out in this like upper school library which is away from the rest of the school and really claustrophobic and really contained and so kind of like their own little world. I think that's where sort of an element of Lord of the Flies comes in in the way they're like, they're really in their bubble. Yeah. You know, they're away from the school and, and, the, and Simon Stevens really makes that clear at the beginning how isolated they are. So it, it, it does get very intense that you can imagine in there. And the sort of their own world has its own rules and things like, for instance, the bully who is um, uh, denial homosexual called Bennett, sort of in a real world wouldn't be allowed to rule in the way he does, but this is this upper library, as they call it. Um, so he sort of rules the roost and he's sort of king around these other a lot <coughs> less confident, self conscious people, even though he's probably the most, possibly the most. Possibly the most, um, what's that word? Right. Being overly sensitive. Insecure. Yeah, insecure. Yeah. Why can't that? <laughs> insecure people there. And yeah, and basically uh, a girl called Lily, who is the new girl from Cambridge, comes in and sort of, she doesn't really, she doesn't really, I suppose she affects everyone in some little way. She just comes and sort of turns it on its head. You know, because she puts another element in there, something from the outside world coming in. William, who is a very paranoid, very in his own head, very insecure, very, very lost young man, who kind of views the world as a very difficult way to get on. And not somewhere where a lot of joy comes out and he sees himself as being different from everyone else basically he thinks that everyone else is sort of robots and that he has this excelled mind and he sees things for the way they really are and he is all these other people are only happy because they're living in ignorant bliss basically because they don't really understand but she comes in and sort of tempts the idea that she might be like him uh, and when he finds out that she isn't uh, things for him sort of fall apart and he at that point becomes I suppose the, I suppose he's not the protagonist but he's sort of the driving force of this spiral that everyone gets caught up in uh, because he gets from losing Lily to someone else another character called Nicholas who is normal and good looking and plays sport and the classic guy that any girl would go for but that Lily just never thought he, she, well, William never thought Lily would, but she did. Um, losing Lily to him, and then, and then I think he's so filled with, with anger and, and passion, really, that he then finally sticks up to a bully, the bully Bennett, who bullies this boy called Chadwick, who's very quiet and a bit geeky. And, um, and then that adds another element to William's discomfort because the bully then turns on him as it would. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to give away. Yeah. I've probably given a, I'm just talking about the story. It's really bad. But anyway, yeah, let me bring it back and say that it's, it's, it, 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 the play is really about the idea, I think, of normality, of what is, norm, what is normal. I mean, it's called punk rock, and I think a lot of thing that people miss about punk rock music is that it didn't just hit the, uh, the poorer, like, lower classes when it came out and inspire people and and it wasn't that grimy, like, it was so grimy, but like, it really hit the white middle classes, because they were, 
and their establishments, these public schools and things, suddenly kids started to say, Mike, fuck, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do what this older person tells me. And I, I, I want to be different. I want to make a difference. I want to go out there and be fucking weird and wonderful. And 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 that's great. And that's that. It brought such a liberation to to young people. But also with that, kind of comes this idea of of being. I think William takes that idea to a new level of being different from the crowd, you know. And it's that anger, it's that anger that he is different. And and whether normality, you know, being normal, fitting in is something that's good. And a lot of people have, you know, mediocrity is not, I think, something to be like ashamed of. It's not because it's not even mediocrity. It's just living a normal life. It's just Lily has a speech at the end where she sort of says, you know. You might grow up and have kids and have a job and have a nice house and like it's that's okay, you know. Like ninety nine percent of people do that and it's happy and, and it's just some young people get wrapped up in this idea that they have to be like, I don't know, on some sort of crusade. Um, and yeah, I suppose it just I suppose it like explores that idea of being normal and how, how much William isn't. And then also with that, uh, William's, I suppose, not normalness, you know, whether that's insanity or is it really called insanity just if someone is in a box, you know, just someone is, just if someone's in a box, it doesn't mean that you can tick a box and say, yeah, they're psychotic or their their mind isn't well. It's just, you know, I suppose, and that's where Equus, I, I always think, comes in a bit, because when they talk about the boy, you know, the doctor, when he finally cures him, sort of questions whether he's actually got rid of a monster or possibly killed like something beautiful you know um, so I think there's a lot of that idea in there yeah. yeah so the show's been running since 2004 and it's been a sellout show every year since then well no no our theatre company has been going since 2004 basically we were we were we were all part of this theatre company called close-up theatre who have been running since 2004 and have had uh, we had sell, sell out statuses for those years until, up until now, oh, okay, yeah. and then we sort of took uh, took a sort of we we're like a sister company to them, so we sort of it's like taking a slice out of it, and we sell it. Just, they're coming up as well. They're going to be up here a bit later, doing um, they're doing the crucible, and we sort of decided to take a little section of that theatre company with all the people that were in it. All my cast came from close up, and now we're doing our own thing under no profit. Um, with this new play, we wanted to choose something new and modern, and yeah. So um, it's new this year. No Along profit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're fresh this year. We're oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the company's new this year. Right. So, what was it that made you want to get into acting? Um. Oh, I don't know. All at school. Yeah. There's nothing else. To Did do. you go to uh, any Not acting no, schools or? A, no, I didn't. Um, I applied for, I applied for MIT, but um. That's the closest I did to doing training. I couldn't do MIT because I, I then got skins. That's yeah. why I got skins. Uh, just just as I just started doing MIT. But no, I, was, I mean, I was never I was never particularly sporty. And um, I don't know. I suppose I was young, ginger lad <laughs> who got taken out of a bit and didn't really know what I was doing or what I was. And then I just got into it. Um, it wasn't like an escape. It was such a like. <laughs> it was. No, I just, I just loved it yeah. doing it with my mates, you know. And this is the amazing thing about this. It's like, you know, I mean, I've got on a lot with the people, with the people I've done on other stuff like Skins, and then um, I, did, I shot a film recently, and that was great. But like, there's not, there's nothing like, like going back to your roots and doing a play with your mates. Like, I think the chemistry is pretty unbeatable. Yeah. It's wicked. It's so fun, you know, the rehearsing, and then we're all living up here together, and it's wicked. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um I hear a rumour that you got, you were in the top 10 of 50,000 people for your GCSEs. I, yeah, I was. Is that true? Yeah. That's fantastic. I think so. There's, if that's what is somewhere in that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And you apparently also auditioned originally for the role of Rich on Skins. I did, yeah. I was up, I was going for Rich until like Eps, no, sorry, audition like six. Yeah. And then they called me and said, you haven't got it. Which wasn't surprising because I remember being in an audition with Alex Arnold, who plays Rich, and thinking like, "Fuck!" <laughs> like if there was ever a character in the room, like, he was just sat in the room. It was like just watching Rich sat in the room. It was like, "Right, that's gone." Um, and then they called me and said, "Yeah, I've got Rich, but come in and read for Aloe," which was kind of like, "Yeah, fuck! Why am I doing that?" Like I remember reading Rich and thinking, 
I love this, but this isn't. Like, it's, I'm not, I just didn't think I was right. Um, but then they asked me to well, audition for Adam, and it just sort of took off from there. Yeah. So did you did you love working on Skins? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Like young, young new writers, not young new directors, and young new actors all together having a go at something that a lot of us had never done before. Um, which was so exciting. It's such a fresh show. And the fact that they audition, they give opportunities to people mm -hmm. like me who don't have an agent, didn't have an agent, and just love doing it mm -hmm. and fans of the show and just giving it a go. I think half our cast came from open auditions, which is great. Yeah. You know, people that had done acting but hadn't, like, weren't professional. And, and, um, and yeah, obviously it's helped so much. It's given yeah. the opportunity to so many of us. Like me and Alex Arnold and uh, Leia Lewis and Jess Sula we all, we all came from open. So, yeah. yeah, so um, do you think you'll be doing any more TV work in the future or you'll be sticking to more productions in theatre? I very much hope that I will get some more work. Mm -hmm. I will take anything that comes from it. Um, I'd love to do some more theatre. Um, I think I feel very young and I feel very inexperienced and quite scared when I do professional work. So I think theatre is a great place to try things and get, this, think, get things wrong and learn from directors, learn yeah. from techniques. Um, I was going to go to drama school, but now I'm not because I just I just want to work and like really pursue it. I think I want to learn. I think you can learn anything you need to learn. Hopefully, on the job, surrounded yeah. by good actors, you know, people who have done a lot before and experience really. Yeah. Just being around experience, I think, is great. Yeah. So I, I will. I'd love to do anything. Yeah. So tell us a bit about the film that you're going to be in. It's with Bill Nighy and Rachel McAdams. It is. Yeah. It's yeah, called. It's so um, exciting. Yeah. It's called About Time, uh, and it's about this boy called Tim. It's sort of like a comedy, time traveling love. Are you Tim? I'm not Tim. No, what character are you playing? Tim is played by a very good looking chap called Donald Gleason, who you're going to see in Anna Karenna very soon. Um, and I'm playing a character called Jay, who's sort of uh, a good mate, a good plucky, enthusiastic, uh, balls deep mate of Tim's. Oh, right, brilliant. Yeah. So have you, have you finished filming that? Then? I have, yeah. I filmed yeah. that last month. When is it due to come out? Sometime next year. I would love <laughs> to tell you. And I, I genuinely, it's not like I can't answer, don't I? Yeah. Whenever they finish it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well it's been really, really great speaking to you. Yes, and you too. The Thank play you is so absolutely fantastic. I watched yeah. it earlier. It's really, really good. Um, and it will be on at The Space on the Mile um, until the 18th of August every day at 4.15pm. I really recommend you come see it. It's so good. Yeah. yeah I'm, um, we'd appreciate anyone who wants to come. Yeah. It'd be nice to see how it feels like coming. Alright, I'm Lucinda Shale and you've been watching Waffle TV.